So uh, welcome to this this session. So the, the the first speaker is going to be Julio Kiribela. Uh, Julio, when you want, you can you can load your or share your screen. Julio works in Hong Kong, right? I mean, he's going to speak about time. I understand, right? I mean, and uh, okay, I think it, it could be it, it, it looks interesting. Julio, what do you want? Thank you, Miguel, um, and thanks everybody for uh, for being here uh, this uh, second part of the morning session. And of course, thanks to the organizers, to Adam, Jarek, and Remik for putting together this very interesting workshop. So today's talk, uh, my, my talk has this title, The Quantum Time Flip, which may be a bit mysterious. So let me tell you first what it is. So this is gonna be a talk about time symmetry in quantum mechanics and about the possibility to probe physical processes in a superposition of two opposite time directions. This is a re relatively recent work, uh, was posted on the archive in December and is a work together with uh, Zixuan Liu, who is a PhD student in my group uh, here in Hong Kong. So let's get started um, with a bit of, bit of introduction about uh, time symmetry in quantum mechanics. So this has been a, a very much discussed topic uh, since the very beginning. Um, of course, uh, probably in the, the most famous result is the, the CPT theorem that says that uh, at the fundamental level, the dynamics of fields is time symmetric in a sense that uh, if you ex exchange the direction of time, if you change t into minus t, and you change the charges and also the parity of all the particles that are involved, the, the, the equations of the dynamic remain the same. So this is a, a high level property of the theory of invariance of the form of the equations of motion. Um, so this is perhaps the most famous result about time symmetry in quantum mechanics. Um, there is also a sense that quantum mechanics, uh, at least the mathematical framework of quantum mechanics uh, is uh, a time symmetric uh, in, uh, at least in an intuitive way. So this was discussed by, by many people in different senses. So there are many different senses in which the framework of quantum theory is time symmetric. Among the most famous are the works by Aronoff and co-authors. And uh, what does it mean here that the framework is time symmetric? It's mostly the duality between bras and cats and uh, more operationally, the duality between pre-selection of a state and post-selection of a measurement outcome. So this is time symmetry of the mathematical framework that makes you feel somehow that the self doesn't care about the direction of time. At, at the high level, at the fundamental level, there is some sort of time symmetry. Well, the problem is that we do care about the direction of time. I mean, we as, as agents are very much time symmetric, again, in many senses. Um, I would say the way, the professional way to say that is that uh, our experimental capability seems not to be time symmetric. So the way we probe physical processes is a forward in time, not backward in time. So what does it mean? It means uh, that, uh, well, here, here I drew a possible agent who operates in the in the forward direction of time in my picture from left to right. So this agent has the ability to initialize the system in some state, let's call it rho, some density matrix rho. So this will be sent through some device to some physical process and some output state will come out of that. Eventually the, the, the agent can put a measurement that, there, measure the system and there will be some outcome, maybe a click or not a click, for example. Okay, so the structure of the experiment itself is time asymmetric. And um, also in the kind of official operational framework of quantum theory is, is uh, asymmetric because we can choose how to initialize the state of the system. Is the rules, the operational rules are that we can prepare any state in any density matrix, but we cannot choose the outcome of our measurement. So we cannot in advance decide what outcome will come out. We, we cannot choose to post select deterministically. So it seems to have uh, some power of doing pre-selections and not so much power of doing post-selections. Uh, I, I mean, in a natural sense, I mean, we, we can a posteriori decide to post-select, but this is, is not in the same sense in which we pre-select. Now there has been much of a discussion of what would be the origins of this time asymmetry. Debates that have been there and these debates will not be the point of this talk, but let me just mention that there are different explanations for why uh, at the operational level, we have a time asymmetry. The explanation go from uh, a low entropy of the of initial state of the whole universe to some low entropy inside ourselves, or like ourselves being systems that start with lower entropy and get more entropic over time. 
also some idea of coarse graining. So these are different proposals. There are many different authors that have been looking into this in the past. Uh, so debate on, on what are the origins, but it's generally acknowledged that, that um, physics itself is fundamentally time symmetric. And the time asymmetry is some sort of artifact of our own perspective, of, of the way we are. It, it, it depends on the way we are, essentially. Okay, so one question is like, okay, if we are in a certain way, can we imagine some other agents that are in a different, uh, they're made in a different way? So for example, can we imagine some backward facing agent that have the opposite abilities than the one we have? For example, here it would be the ability to prepare a quantum state raw in the future, send it backward through, the, through, through a device and observing what state come out. So making a measurement in the past and seeing if there is a click or not. Okay, so in, at least in principle, it's natural to imagine that this is possible because this is just ordinary quantum theory flipping past to the future. So there is not, not much creativity needed to understand this. But there are some questions that we can ask here. First of all, the interesting question is it's not about this picture of time reversing the agent, but the picture of, about the process itself. Like, Arguably, not all processes will have the property that you can look at them in two ways, from the past to the future and from the future past. So the first question is like, which physical processes are compatible with this double description, with this dual description? Which physical processes can respond well to pre-selections and also respond well to post-selection? So that's the first interesting question here. Uh, the second interesting question is like, um, how do we translate from the description of physics made by ourselves, by forward facing agents, to the description of physics that is made by a backward facing agents, like somebody who is looking at physics from the opposite uh, direction of time. And again, this is also an interesting question. There is uh, some non trivial point to be made here. Um, if you want to go even more crazy than this, we could imagine some agent that is somehow time delocalized. So imagine a superposition of a scenario where an agent's agent can pre-select and act in the past and move from the past to the future, or also post-select and move backward in, into the past. So we can imagine an agent that is put by nature in a, in a kind of Schrodinger cut situation, which is, it is of being in a superposition of being looking forward and looking backward as a sort of uh, Janus, the, 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 the god with the two faces that would look backward and forward. So you could imagine uh, playing with the framework of quantum mechanics, we could imagine a situation like this. And again, there are, um, so, so here I made a little bit of a cartoon of this picture. So uh, there would be a superposition of a state rho p prepared in the past and the state rho f prepared in the future. And these two would kind of enter into the, the device from the two opposite ports. And well, and then the agent would do measurements and would look at what comes out of the two ports. At this point, I got tired of making the cartoon, so you don't see the, the measurements and the stuff, but uh, so that you, I think you got the idea. So the questions are here. Uh, okay, so, well, how do we describe these agents? Are, are they logically conceivable? Can we even, uh, I mean, is this bogus or can we kind of give a mathematical meaning, at least mathematical meaning, to this notion of agent that is kind of double, is bi bidirectional, that is operating in opposite direction? And the second question is a question, basically foundational question, is like what is information processing power of these agents? So these four questions, the two in this slide and the two in the previous slides, are the point of the talk. Um, as you see, most of the motivation and the interest of this is foundation. It starts from curiosity and it goes into kind of some mathematical structure of quantum theory that I will argue that have some depth to them. Um, from the point of view of physics, if you're kind of more, uh, kind of less foundationally oriented, but still thinking about the theoretical physics. So one question is like, um, uh, it, it may be interesting to, to study this uh, strange type of agents uh, from the point of view of better understanding what can happen in, in a future theory of quantum gravity. So that's the kind of the traditional motivation for every sort of crazy thing that we could do with the time and causality. So again, this applies here. So it's interesting to see what, what, how we could describe these exotic situations. And the information theoretic uh, questions is also a way to understand how reasonable it is to, to have this type of agents uh, in, in reality. So these agents may or may not exist. Somehow this study is a way to understand better by contrast 
I mean, whether there is a need for assuming time asymmetry or whether, or whether time asymmetry is something that could happen in some physical regime. Sorry, it, it, not time asymmetry, time superposition of time, coherence in the direction, in the arrow of time. So these are the questions of the talk. So now let me move towards uh, toward the more uh, the, the content and the meat of the talk. So the talk has two parts. The first is about uh, time reversals and the characterization of the bidirectional processes. And the second part is about the superpositions. So what is a bidirectional process? It's a process that uh, in principle can be probed both in the forward direction and in the backward direction. So it's a process that can interact well both with the forward agents that uh, pre-select state uh, quantum system in some density matrix, and with, the, in, and with backward agents that post-select uh, uh, states uh, of the, in a certain state of the density matrix and send it through. So a bidirectional process is a process that can respond, can give you an output in both cases. It can be used into the, in, in this double way. Um, of course, the same process will be seen in a different way from the two different agents. So an agent with, um, with the forward time direction may describe this process as a quantum channel, C, some completely positive trace preserving map. And the other agent will see it in a different way because, I mean, this is a change of reference frame. Changing T into minus T is a pretty dramatic change of reference frame. So there will be some different way of describing the process. I call it here theta of, of C, where theta is somehow is the change of description that, that we apply. So here C is the description of, this, of the physics done by the forward agent. And the theta of C is the description of physics done by the backward agent. Uh, notice here that I'm talking, uh, I will talk about time reversal. Here, by no means, I am assuming that these processes are reversible. So I'm not asking this channel C to be reversible. And I'm not asking that the time, that, that this uh, theta of C should be the inverse of it. It doesn't need to be the inverse. Here we are just talking about how different agents describe the same physics. The physics itself may even be irreversible. So the word time reversal that you're gonna see soon in, in the next slide has nothing to do with the fact that these channels, these processes are invertible by themselves. So what we are doing is just we are reversing our descriptions of the physics. Okay, so here is the word, time reversal. So what I'm gonna call time reversal in this talk and what many other people also call the time reversal is just the change of description. This map theta that translates from, the, the, from C, that is the description made by, by the forward agent to theta of C, that is the description made by, by the backward agent. So the time reversal is just, uh, in the most general sense, is a passive transformation from the point of view of one agent to the point of view of another agent. Um, again, it doesn't have to be a physical inversion of the physical process itself. I mean, the process may be irreversible. We just want to say, if, uh, if I describe this uh, device in this way, that tells me how the device responds to my preselection, how would the, 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 the backward agent describe it, uh, uh, the, the response to the post-selection? So these are two different things. One is like how the device responds to pre-selection. The other is how it responds to post-selection. Okay, so let's see what devices are uh, bidirectional and uh, what time reversals we can define like in principle without assuming, a, I mean, assuming some physical principles about what this change of description should be. So I will give four axioms. Uh, the first is uh, the symmetry of the description between the time, uh, the forward and, and the backward agent. So you know that in quantum theory, the most general, the most general uh, quantum process is described by a quantum channel. This is a completely positive trace preserving linear map. I didn't write the equation, so I guess, uh, I mean, if you know what it is good, if you don't know, just take it as, uh, for granted. That this is how uh, we describe a, a general quantum process. So the, the set of processes that the, the, the forward agent sees will be this, denoted in this way, like with the arrows going from the left to the right, will be the way that the forward agent dis, describes the, the, the bi, a bidirectional process. The, the, pos, the possible set of all bidirectional process uh, will, be called, uh, will be called in this way. In the same for the backward uh, facing agent, there will be another set that uh, is a subset of the set of quantum channels describing the possible, uh, the possible dynamics that the backward agent can see. 
Now, the symmetry of the description is to ask that uh, the point of two, these two points of view coincide. So if you look at the sets of, the, the, of channels that you have seen by, by, by one agent and seen by the other, as a set, so they are the same set. So like they, they describe the same physics. And this change of description must be a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two sets. So like whatever the, the forward agent uh, sees corresponds to something that the, the, the backward agent sees and vice versa. So this, this is just a, what it means for theta to be a change of description. Okay. And there is a time symmetry at the high, le high level of, this, uh, of these processes. The second property is a characteristic of time reversal is the order inversion. So imagine that you have a sequence of processes that take, take place in time. So here there is the blue process and the, the pink process. So for a forward agent, the blue process comes before, the, uh, happens before the, the, the pink one. For the backward agent is the other way around. Because that's pretty much part of what it means to have uh, an opposite uh, direction of time. So the time re what makes a time reversal a time reversal is that it inverts the order in which the processes are seen. So for every channel, so C1 and C2 that, are, that describe some bidirectional process, the translation of uh, C1 after C2 in, in, the, in, the, in the language of the backward agent becomes uh, C2 after C1. Uh, sorry. And here I think I screwed up. <laughs> so, yes, the order, I, I mean, I said it, but I didn't type it. Uh, so the theta of C1, C2 should be theta of C2 composed with theta of C1. So the, 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 sorry about the typo. All right, so that's uh, pretty much what you want to call something a time reverse. Huh? Now, something that, uh, that I would argue is also important is consistent with, the, with randomness, with randomization. So imagine that your device uh, is some device I with some probability PI. So what the device is uh, somehow, I would say from, from an outside point of view is not contingent to the, the forward agent or the, or the, the backward agent. So like this, the, the device could be one or two options. So when I mix them, I would say that um, we should have, uh, first of all, that the mixture of, of, of two bidirectional process should also be bidirectional. And when I change the description, the change of description should be convex. So if I see a mixture of C1 and C2 with probability P and one minus P, the, the backward facing agent should be to see a mixture of theta of C1 and theta of C2 with the same probabilities that I have. Because, I mean, this is not related to our own description, like the probability that this device is there or not. So at least from a Bayesian point of view, uh, from, from an external point of view, uh, I would say that this property is required. Uh, finally, there is uh, the, the intuition that a reversible dynamic is the type of dynamics that is fundamentally bidirectional. This is like what comes from the CPT theorem and the fundamental physics. So the, the, the requirement is that if a process is re reversible, then it also is bidirectional. It has a time reversal. If it is inversal, if it, it is an invertible process or a unitary process, I mean here, if a process is unitary, it should be a process that admits both directions, which was kind of the original intuition from which the whole story started that the unitary dynamics is, uh, in, in, in a sense, uh, time reversible and, and also, um, also admits an operation of time reversal. So these are the four physical axioms that I'm requiring. I will not assume any, anything except these axioms. So now the next step is to characterize what time reversals are allowed by these four axioms. And um, I will start now from the unitary dynamics. That is kind of the easier case, somehow is the case that dominates the rest of the story. Uh, so in a relatively easy theorem to prove is to show that um, up to changes of basis, so up to unitary equivalences, there are only two possible time reversals for the unitary dynamics. The first is the obvious one, the one that everybody would think of is just the inverse, like uh, the adjoint of the U dagger is, is one possible way of describing the time reversal of U. And the other is the transpose. So the transpose of the matrix U in some basis is also a, an allowed time reversal. So these are the two main categories of allowed time reversals. All the rest that you can do is just this uh, conjugated by some fixed unitary gate. Uh, now, for qubits, uh, there is not really much difference between this, the adjoint and the transpose because you can move from one to the other by unitary equivalence. You just conjugate with the Pauli matrix Y 
and for every uh, matrix U in SUD, you, you go from U dagger to U transpose and vice versa. So basically, if you want to take a simple message for qubits, the time reversal is just the, the dagger or, or the transpose. There is no difference between these two. For a higher dimensional system, these are genuinely two different ways to define a time reversal. Now, what's the difference between these two ways? Traditionally, I would say if I asked you what is the time reversal of a unitary gate before the start of the talk, 90% you would have answered that the time reversal is the dagger of a unitary gate. That's definitely the most popular option. And the intuition is that if in one direction Psi evolves to Psi prime, that is some unitary transformation of Psi, then in the opposite direction, you should go from Psi prime to Psi. So the evolution should be U dagger. Obvious, no? Well, this argument is not so, 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 so logical as, as it seems at first sight, because it assumes that the forward agent and the backward agents describe the states of the system in the same way, that what is Psi for a forward agent is also Psi for the backward agent. And we know that this, for, for particles, for example, this is just not true. I mean, when you have a particle that moves in space, the time reversal preserves the position but inverts the momentum. And if you look in, in kind of in phase space, then, so this is a complex conjugation in the position basis. So if you look from kind of a particle point of view, it is more reasonable to think that um, the backward agents describe the state not as a psi, but as a psi complex conjugate in the, com in the position basis. And therefore the natural time reversal is actually the transpose and not the dagger. Uh, I will come back actually to the difference between the transpose and the dagger. It will appear uh, at least two more times in the talk. Okay, so that's just the first introduction of why, why these two different ways are actually inequivalent uh, and there is a point in distinguishing them. Now, what are the, now let's go to the next step from unitary to general channels. So what are the possible bidirectional channels? Uh, here there is a theorem, not so easy as the previous one, and it's a bit of a more complicated theorem to prove that the set of bidirectional quantum channels is exactly what is called the set of bistochastic channels. So maps that are trace preserving and also unit preserving, also map the identity operator into itself. Or if you like, they map the maximally mixed state into itself. So this is the biggest class and the whole class of, of um, of possible processes where you can define a time reversal with the four properties that I required before. Um, so bistochastic channels are a classic topic, uh, at least in mathematical physics and, um, and, uh, and, and also in quantum information. They appear a lot in quantum thermodynamics as well. So what we have here is a new way to characterize the bistochastic channels. Uh, so the way the characterization, they are the largest set of quantum channels that are, admit the time reversal that can be described both in the forward and in the backward direction in a way that satisfies the four axioms that are required. Okay, so this is the second step to know what are the bidirectional dynamics. So not all possible channels, but not only the unitary ones. So basically the, there is some irreversible, a pretty large class of irreversible channels that can be described that is bidirectional um, and, and is, yeah, is not unitary. So now the third and final result about time reversal is that uh, up to a changes of, change of basis, again, there are only two possible time reversal, the adjoint of the channel and the transpose of the channel. So the adjoint is defined, uh, I mean, in the, the Krauss representation, you pick some Krauss operators of the channel and just put the dagger everywhere for every Krauss operator, this is the adjoint. And the transpose is the same, you pick a Krauss representation put transpose everywhere, and then you, the new channel you get in this way is the transpose. This definition is co-share, I mean, is independent of which Krauss representation you choose. The, both the adjoint and the transpose are well-defined independently of the, Krauss operation, uh, of the Krauss operators. So the proof idea here is, is a simple, it's based on what I showed before. I mean, the proof implementation is less simple, but the idea is simple. So we know that by theorem two, the time reversal can only be defined on the bistochastic channels. And there is a beautiful result in mathematical physics that says that the bistochastic channels are affine combinations of unitary channels. So they are not random mixtures of unitary channels, but they are linear combinations with possibly negative coefficients, but they are in the linear span. Um, so this result was proved by, by Mendel and Wolf in the paper that I cited in the previous slide. It has been reproved by us in a more constructive way. And if you look at our paper, there is also like the way to decompose a given channel into, in this way. 
as a mix, as, a, as an affine combination of, of, um, of unitary channels. So basically, we know that by linearity, the, the time reversal of, um, of general bistochastic channel is fixed by the time reversal of unitary channels. And for unitary channels, uh, we know that there is only the transpose and, uh, and the, the adjoint uh, up to changes of basis. So this concludes a full characterization of all the quantum, the time reversals that you can imagine in quantum theory. Okay, um, now let's go back again to the difference between the adjoint and the transpose. So there is a very fundamental difference in dimension larger than two between the adjoint and the transpose. If you think of these operations that you are doing as a higher level operation on the channels, uh, the transpose is completely positive. The adjoint is not. So what does it mean non-technically? It means that if you have a bipartite channels with a pair of input and a pair of output, and you try to apply a partial time reversal, to time reverse only one part, let's say the Ellis part of the channel, and leave the Bob part of the channel in, uh, unchanged. So you, you have a sort of, how can I say, a sort of strabic agent that is looking on one side from the left to the, to the, the right and, the, and, the other, and, the, and for the other part in the opposite way. So if you apply this time reversal locally, only on part of a bipartite channel, what you get is, is, is a valid channel if your, trans, if your time reversal is the transpose, and you don't get a valid channel if the time reversal is, is, the, is, the, is the adjoint. So the result of the partial time reversal is a legitimate channel only if the time reversal is the transpose in dimension larger than two. Dimension two doesn't matter. So in, in technical terms, you can say that the, only the transpose is a super map on B stochastic channel. So this super map was a technical term we defined earlier on uh, for transformations of, of channels into channels. And if you have a subset of channels, the definition was provided in this other paper, the second paper below. So basically, physically, informally, we can say that the super maps describe the operations that you can perform actively on the channel. So far, we talked about the time reversal as a passive operation. If you want to do it in a certain, in, in, some, in any possible sense, if you want to do a time reversal as an active operation, as something that you perform on the channel, it can only be done if the, if the time reversal was the transpose, which kind of matches with the physical picture that I gave you before. Somehow the, the transpose in some respect has some, uh, some, some good physical motivation. Okay, that was all for part one of the talk. Let me go to part two. So now that I know what is a time reversal, I know how a backward facing agent would describe the same physics. Now we can go up in the level of craziness and I can try to imagine a way to, to, to put this two description in a quantum superposition. So the idea is that in principle, we could imagine that the arrow of time itself, or, the, or at least the arrow of time for an agent is in a superposition of the forward and backward direction. So in a cartoonish picture, you could have like the cat of the agents looking forward and probing a, defi a device from past to future, plus another cat with, with an agent looking backward and the time direction of time going, uh, looking backward and the agent probing the, the device in the opposite direction. So uh, Julio, 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 excuse me. We have yes. a, a comment um, yes. in, the, in Discord. Uh, yeah. Konrad Simansky says that uh, partial transpose is one of the most known C, uh, CP maps. Partial transpose is the, one of the most known not CP maps. I would say. Not CP maps, yeah. The partial transpose of a state is not the CP map. Mm. Yes, I am talking here about the partial trans. Well, not the partial transpose, but I'm, uh, I'm talking about the transpose of the channel, which is a different thing for the partial tra transpose of the state. And even if you, if for those who know, I mean, I guess that the person who asked it knows about the choi yamiokoski uh, um, isomorphism. Even if you go to that picture, the, what I call the, the transpose of a channel has nothing to do with the transpose of, of the choi state. Really nothing. Uh, what is, what the, my transpose is in the choi picture is just the swap of the input with the output. Mm -hmm. It's just a unitary operation. So it's, it is completely positive. I mean, that's the way, I mean, the question is good because it allowed me to show what the proof is. The proof of complete positivity is that if you go to that picture, what I call the, the transpose map, just changing every cross operator to, to its transpose is the swap, is, this, is a unitary operation. 
All right. So physically, here we have a situation where um, uh, the agent is in a superposition of being able to pre-select and being able to post-select. So in a sense, there is a control qubit that decides what the agent can do. The control qubit is the arrow of time itself. We can call it the, the arrow of time qubit. That is like this arrow inside the cat would be like an orthogonal state so that, this, that controls which of these operational possibilities is valid. Okay, how, how do you describe this mathematically? I mean, the quantum theory has a sort of standard way to do these things. Whenever you have two channels, A and B, there is some reasonable way to talk about the superposition of these two channels. This has been studied by many authors, starting by Aaron of Ananda, Popescu, and Weidman, and uh, in different than OI. So uh, the first group of authors did it for, for unitary channels. Then OI generalized to, uh, Daniel OI generalized to, to noisy channels. Johan Habeg gave a kind of more field theoretic picture. And recently, other people like myself and Abbott and, um, and et al. considered this for quantum communication and kind of revisited how you define this, this superposition and generalized to correlated channels and many other things. So this is a relatively standard. If you have two quantum channels, A and B, you can define a superposition by picking two Krauss representations for the two channels, like uh, Krauss operators AI for one, Krauss operator BI for the other. And then you can define a controlled channel in this way with Krauss operator CI that are like either AI uh, with, uh, with uh, controlled by cat zero and or BI controlled by cat one. So this is a valid channel you can define if I give you the Krauss, uh, a Krauss representation for channel A and a Krauss representation for channel B. In general, this is highly non-unique. So it is called the superposition of channels A and B, but this is a bit of an abuse of notation because it doesn't depend only on channels A and B. It depends on a lot of stuff that is hanging around and depends on these Krauss operators. But anyways, the point, point is that there is a standard way to define the superposition of any channels you like. So why not? Let's superpose the, channel, the forward channel with the backward channel. So if you want, um, uh, to do this, you can, you can take a, a channel that has a forward cross operator CI, and then the con coherently controlled the time reversal is a superposition of uh, that channel C and the, the theta of C, the, the time reversed version. So you put a, a time reversal operation on the, on the cross operator, either you dagger them or you transpose them. So you choose one of these two options, and then you will have your superposition of these two different, uh, of these two different type of processes. So I call this uh, the time flipped channel, a channel that has control on whether you flip it uh, forward or backward. And um, if you started from a bistochastic channel, then the output is a channel, is a valid channel, and is also bistochastic itself. So it's, everything stays nicely into the club of bistochastic channels. Okay, again, there is something to say about the adjoint versus the transpose here. So if you implement the, the, the time reversal with the adjoint, so if you go to my previous definition here, you define the controlled superposition of forward and backward process. And if you, if you choose your small theta of C to be the, the, the adjoint of, uh, of CI, so if, you, if you put this, you get that this time flip channel depends on the choice of Krauss operator. So again, it's not very canonical, it's something that, uh, uh, it needs some extra, I mean, it, it cannot be built from the channel itself, or from only the channel itself. It requires some sort of extra resource, whatever it is, we don't, we don't really know. Um, if instead you implement the time reversal with the transpose, then the, the magic is that the time flip channel you get is independent of the cross, cross, choice of cross operators. So it happens that in this case, and only in this case, you can think of this uh, coherently controlled time reversal as an operation that you do on the channel, like the operation of adding control to the direction of time. So I will call this operation the quantum time flip. Technically, again, this is a super map, is a map defined on channels themselves. And from a given bistochastic channel, this map gives you a new bistochastic channel that is function of that and describe the enhanced access of an agent that is able to use the original channel in a superposition of two directions. It's able to probe it both from the forward direction and from the backward direction. Okay, good. So we will see later, it's, it's, anyways, it's pretty easy to see that uh, 
there is no way to, to build this channel if you are an ordinary agent that can only build normal quantum circuits. There is no quantum circuit that does this job for you. No quantum circuit alone can, can, can implement the quantum time flip. Let me jump ahead a little bit and show that you can actually simulate that. So even if you cannot do it, uh, in, 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 if you are a, if just a forward facing agent, if you are a little forward facing agent that can only do something before your device, apply the device and then do something after, there's no way you can simulate them. Uh, you can reproduce exactly the quantum time flip, but you can still simulate it in some way. And I will show you two ways to simulate this with the real experiments that you can actually do if you want, or if you have enough a powerful laboratory for that. One way is to simulate the quantum time flip probabilistically using conclusive teleportation, which is known already to do all sorts of funny things with the time. <laughs> kind of, so, so perhaps it's not so surprising that we can also do this. So you just need to prepare a canonical bell state, apply your forward process, now the control qubit will control swap the input and the output, uh, well, well, sorry, the two systems in, the, in this entangled state, in the, in the choice state that you get out. And then you use whatever you get out as a resource for quantum teleportation. If you are lucky enough that you get the same outcome corresponding to the, to the state that you had at the beginning, conditional to this particular outcome, you have implemented the, the quantum time flip. So you can really experience or do an experiment on how the world would look if you had this bidirectional access to a channel, probabilistically with the probability one over d square, which is maybe not so high, but it goes down exponentially with the number of qubits in the system that you are trying to, to manipulate. But still it's kind of nice that you could have some experimental access to that. The probability is non-zero. Another way to simulate uh, the quantum time flip is via interferometry. So you can imagine really to do an experiment with, uh, with a crystal that describes a device. You can decide to send a photon either from one direction, let's say from the left to the right, coming to the crystal and exiting on the other side, or from the right to the left. Like um, you just split the photon along two paths, make it enter into the crystal into opposite direction and come out. If you do the, the kind of the quantum optical anal uh, analysis, you'll find that indeed what you get when you enter into a crystal in the opposite direction is unitarily equivalent. It's not exactly the transpose of, of, of a unitary gate, but when you get something that is unitarily equivalent up to a Pauli Z, you get something that is unitarily equivalent to the transpose. So you can, you can see that. And this is again a simulation because by no means we are, <laughs> we are entering into the device from the future. We're just simulating the direction of time with the spatial direction. With, we are simulating time with space. But this is nice because also, again, it's an experiment that one can do and it has been done. It's, it is being done at least by one group that I know at the University of Science and Technology in Ch uh, of China. This experiment has done already, one experiment has already been done where it can probe this superposition. Okay, very good. So these are kind of, the way you can try to touch experimentally this, this kind of crazy and exotic physics that, that we imagined uh, purely based on our own uh, creativity and imagination. So now, uh, oops, I raised a cha change of topic. There should have been a new title here saying that, um, okay, to conclude, I wanted to show that uh, there is also some information theoretic power that comes from, from this quantum time flip, from the ability to, to probe processes in a superposition of forward and backward direction. Um, the game is similar to other games that we have seen in the study of quantum causality, in particular in the study of, um, for those who know this, of the quantum switches, is a similar primitive that, that I uh, my colleagues and I proposed a few years ago, more than 10 years ago now. And there was a game that had this similar flavor. So this is kind of uh, inspired in a sense that, that by, by, by those type of game. Is a game between one referee that enforces the rules of the game and one player, Alice. And the game goes in this way. So the referee gives Alice two black boxes, two, two, two devices in the lab, uh, with the promise that these two the black boxes implement two unitary gates, U and V. Now, Alice doesn't know anything about U and V. These gates can be completely arbitrary, except for one thing. The referee will promise to Alice that uh, these two gates have one, one and only one of the following two properties. Either UV is equal to VU transpose, so sort of a, some sort of commutation property mediated by the transpose, 
or uv is a minus vu transpose, so the kind of the, the opposite commutation property. So the task for Alice is to decide which of these two alternative uh, uh, alternatives holds. So it's a sort of a gate classification game. I give you a bunch of uh, these two gates and you have to try to, to discover a property that is hidden in the relation between them. Now, it is quite easy to show that uh, if Alice has access to the quantum time flip, if Alice has this bidirectional access to each of these two boxes, then she can win the game deterministically. In principle, of course, deterministically, if, if everything she does is perfect and if these two gates are, are, are perfectly unitary. So in the idealized limit, Alice can do this uh, perfectly and deterministically. How to do it? Well, the game itself has been invented in order to make Alice win, as always in these cases. So the way is that Alice would prepare the control qubit in the state uh, ket plus, uh, uniform superposition of ket zero and ket one. So this means that uh, she starts off with a direction of time that is in the kind of maximally coherent superposition of backward and forward direction. And she prepares the target qubit, the one that goes through the, through the process, uh, through, through the gate, in some state psi. Whatever state she likes is fine. It doesn't matter which state she prepares. So then she would apply the time flipped gate U. So this kind of control U or U transpose that in principle is what she can see by doing this, this, this way of probing the gates. And then she would also apply the, the other gate, the, the time flipped V, uh, the, the gate V that is time flipped in this way. All right. So the end, what remains to do in the end is just to measure the control qubit in the, in the Fourier basis. Julio, Julio, uh, the yes. equation is, is wrong, right? I mean, it should be you, that you transpose tensor one, right? Or <laughs> Yes, yes, okay. thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks Miguel. Uh, yes, it is uh, uh, laziness, my laziness, sorry. I, do, I did the cut and paste and I forgot to, 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 to update. So cat zero has a U and cat one has a U transpose and the same for V. Cat zero, V comes with cat zero, V transpose comes with cat one. Sorry for, for the typo. All right. Um, so what remains to be done is just to measure in the Fourier basis. If the outcome is cat plus, uh, then you, uh, Alice will know that the, the first property holds, the, the, the positive commutation property holds. If the outcome is minus, Alice will know that the negative commutation property holds. All right. This is easy to check. I didn't put the proof. It's like, it's like a one minute calculation you can try to do. I mean, the game itself has been invented in order to make Alice win in this way. What is harder to show is that uh, if Alice doesn't have access to the quantum time flip, there is no circuit. There is no, 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 no possible way to, to play the game that she would allow her to win. So if you have an ordinary circuit where you plug these two unknown gates into a circuit with whatever gates you like, in the meantime, you prepare any state, you do any measurement, it is possible to show that uh, there, is, there, is, um, there is no way to win with probability one. There is a non-zero probability of error that is, in the worst case, is, is at least uh, 1.5. If you do it in average case, it could be a bit more, could be less, but in the worst case, it's at least 1.5% of probability of error, which is not that much, but it means that if the game is played many times by changing the pair of gates every time, so making it hard for Alice, the referee can reliably tell if Alice is able to implement the time flip of U and V or not. So it's a, it's a way to, to witness somehow the superposition of directions of time by asking uh, the, the agent to, to play a game. So it's a way to, to see if the, agent, uh, um, if the agent can win the game or not. This basically concludes the talk. I have a few slides more, uh, which I think I still have maybe a couple of minutes. I, I will just mention the, uh, this a bit of discussion to connect with the uh, other works by others. I mean, I could go on talking for hours about this, but, uh, but I mean, here I put the connection that uh, to me uh, were more striking. So let's do a recap and connection together. So a recap about what uh, time reversals. What I showed is that um, we showed what are all the possible time reversals that are compatible with four axioms. Symmetry, so that, uh, the, the reversing of the order, the preservation of uh, random mixtures, and the, unitary, the fact that unitary dynamics uh, intuitively should be time reversible, should have a time reversal. So the result was that up to changes of basis, there are only two time reversal, the adjoint and the transpose. 
and the channels that admit the time reversal are the bistochastic one, the one that are trace preserving and, and, and identity preserving. Okay, this makes a nice connection with thermodynamics because uh, bistochastic channels have been studied a lot in quantum thermodynamics as the biggest class of, uh, of quantum channels that, uh, that uh, do not decrease the entropy. So there are a, a bunch of operations that are considered in, in quantum thermodynamics. There are the random unitary channels. A, a superset of that is the set of noisy operations that we have heard of uh, in the talk by Michal Ordesky on the first day. And the bistochastic channels are like the, the biggest set that contains both of them and still has the property that entropy does not increase. Okay. So here, if we put uh, A and B together, these two results together, we have uh, a, a link between entropy and time symmetry. Basically, the processes that do not increase the entropy, so those that are com do not decrease the entropy, the ones that are compatible with the second law, are also exactly the same pro uh, the processes that admit a time reversal. To some extent, it may even sound counterintuitive, but in a sense, it's not, I would say. So in a sense, one thing that I find intriguing is to think, okay, maybe we could start from time symmetry as a foundation for thermodynamics. Maybe we could derive these results about entropy increase from a, a, a high level symmetry of the theory we are considering. And I leave you with that. I, I don't, I haven't, we haven't done research on that yet. Uh, more on thermodynamics, oh, sorry for the anime. Uh, so uh, the superposition of forward and backward processes has been considered also in, in another research. You have three minutes, huh? Yes, yes. Just to, just to All right, sorry. Uh, another, I will make it short. So about another work by Rubino, Manzano and Bruckner. So they also have a superposition of forward and backward processes there. So the work that I've shown you is useful for this type of investigation that they, they have done in thermodynamics, because again, it tells you, first of all, what is the domain over which you can do this operation? You, you can do the, and basically it's the domain of the bistochastic channels. And also it tells you which operations you can implement actively by, 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 by placing a channel in a superposition of different time direction. So, so the, here you can go from just writing a channel as a superposition from operationally saying that you build the superposition from the original channel. Uh, so this was a bit that was not in this paper by, by, by Julia and the others. Um, so basically, the, the quantum time flip, when the transpose is the time reversal, is like the active operation that you can think that builds the superposition from the original channel. OK, um, here I had the recap of the quantum time flip. I would actually skip it in the interest of, of, uh, of asking questions. So I would say, OK, um, what remains to be done? For me, the major directions are a more complete understanding of what the quantum time flip gives you, what is the power of this bidirectional agent, maybe computational power as well. And uh, of course, the, what are the physical models where we can really see this? Like maybe quantum gravity, maybe even field theory alone is already enough to, to have some sort of quantum time flip there. So that's all for what I wanted to say in my talk. Thank you for your attention. I will finish with a bit of a, of a job announcement for anybody who may be interested. We have both postdoc and faculty opening at the moment in our QICI uh, at, quantum, at the University of Hong Kong. So that's all. Thank everybody for your attention. Thanks, Miguel, for the very helpful questions during the talk. Good. Thank you, Julia, for this nice talk. Uh, we have lots of questions, and the point is you have one minute to answer them all. So let's see. Okay. The first question is um, um, where well, you can replace the transposition. Wow, oh, damn it. We got new questions, and now I've, I lost that one. <laughs> You can replace the transposition operation inverting time with something which is equivalent but not basis dependent. Um, no, I would say, I mean, no, no, yes and no, sorry. Uh, there is a whole story about basis dependence here. To cut it short, I mean, there is a way to remove this basis dependence by thinking that instead of mapping cats into cats, you're ma mapping cats into bras. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, if you look at the, if you think of, <coughs> sorry, of the time reverse symmetry uh, system, not as the same system, but the system where you flip the cats into bra, magically this the transpose becomes uh, a basis independent operation. Okay. And if you like to do that, uh, welcome to do that. Uh, there are people have been discussing the, about the CHOI operator. So there is a CHOI in basis independent CHOI operator. Uh, it can be done in this way, yes. Okay, let's, you have time for, for another question. So, yeah, Jarek asks uh, how your superposition, the, the one that you showed, I guess the one you showed um, 
you know, these two parts are these, these two orders, is related to that of Bruckner et al. Um, I mean, Bruckner et al, the paper. The switch. I guess, I guess I mean, the, he means the switch. <laughs> well, yeah. the switch, uh, Which is also your thing, actually, because so it's actually, really yeah. a, bit, a bit offending, but okay, I'm sorry. I just read the question. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, the quantum switch um, is related, is, is very related. Well, the spirit is the same, but it's actually also different because the switch is an operation you do on two channels, on channel A and B. From channel A and B as input, you build a superposition of A, B, and B, A. So that's what the switch does for you. The, the, the time flip is an operation of, on a single channel, which must be, be stochastic for you to do that. It's an operation on a single channel. So at this level, it's clearly mathematically different. Now, can you build one from the other and vice versa? Uh, yes and no. From the quantum time flip, you can build something that is a bit like a switch, but instead of A, B superposed with B, A, you get A, B superposed with B transpose, A transpose. Mm -hmm. And the transpose actually is quite important as a difference because the, the switch itself can be simulated by using uh, uh, two uses, at least the, the switch of unitary gates can be simulated by, by doubling the number of, of gates you have. If you want to switch U and V, you have two copies of U and two copies of V, you can do this. You can simulate the switch by doubling the number of uses. Uh, if you have only a unitary gate U and you want to realize that quantum time flip, you cannot do it even if you have like any finite number of uses because doing the time flip means also that you can do the transformation of U into U transpose. And this is known to be impossible, even if you have many uses. So in a certain sense, the quantum time flip uh, is more radical than the quantum switch. Okay, let's, let's, okay. let's go to it again. <laughs>